Jesus is the light of the world. Let us follow him. There, I've lit, a, lit my candle for today. Now, let's change my screen so I can speak to you. Good morning, Woodchurch School, and good morning, High Holden School. It's lovely to be with you again this week for collective worship. I hope you're having a good week at this very start of this new week. Now, over the last two weeks, we've started to have collective worship in All Saints Church in Woodchurch for children at Woodchurch School, and it's lovely to have met some of the classes. So far, I've met reception and year one, hello, and I've also met years four and five, and I'm going to meet the other classes soon. And I'm also looking forward to meeting everybody at, Wood, at High Holden School next month. That will be really lovely. I think you're going to come and see me in church too on a special day when we're going to be telling stories. It's really nice after all this time to get to meet everybody because you've been watching all these videos that I've made, but we haven't all managed to see each other yet. So it'll be good that we get a chance to do that over the next few weeks. Now this term, we're looking at what we can learn from St. Paul, who wrote lots of letters which are included in the New Testament in our Bible. The New Testament is the part of the Bible that was written <clears throat> after the time that Jesus was born, and the Old Testament was written before Jesus was born. So we're going to be thinking about the letters of St. Paul, and they were letters that he sent to the first churches that were set up by the very first followers of Jesus nearly 2000 years ago. And some of them are letters to whole churches and some of them are letters to particular people. And today we're going to be thinking about a particular letter that St Paul wrote to somebody called Timothy. So St Paul wrote about all the, the great things that were happening in church, all the joys and blessings about what people were doing he wrote to encourage people and sometimes he wrote to tell them off a bit if he heard that they weren't doing things properly or that they'd sort of um, strayed away and they were being a bit naughty. He wrote to tell them off as well. So he wrote lots and lots of letters about different things. But through all those letters, he held on really to the love of God. And one of his letters is most famous called the it's a letter to the Corinthians and in that letter we often read a piece of that letter at weddings because it talks all about how wonderful love is so it's a really lovely part of the bible we'll read that together one day but let's hear now more about Timothy so I've got a video to show you about that so let's watch our video now story Timothy so part of God's story is about a guy named Timothy and it begins like this a boy named Timothy, let's call him Tim, was living in a town called Lystra with his grandma Lois and his mom Eunice. These two women taught Tim about God. They also taught him to enjoy spending time with God, just like how you can enjoy spending time with your friends. Tim knew a lot about God and had heard that God was going to send his son Jesus to rescue people from all the wrong things in the world. But since there weren't any TVs or newspapers back then, Tim didn't know that Jesus was already here. One day, a man named Paul came to Tim's city and told the people there that God had sent Jesus to the world and we can know him and follow him. Tim wanted Paul to teach him to follow Jesus. He also wanted to learn other things Paul knew, like how to pray for his friends, how he could know God even better, and how to tell God's story. Kids, can you imagine loving to learn so much that you go to school all the time? You start following your teacher home on weekends and going with your teacher on vacation. You even go to school in the summer. That's kind of what Tim did. He followed Paul everywhere so he could learn new stuff about God all the time. But they didn't stay in one city. They went on a journey to a lot of cities like Corinth, Greece, Jerusalem, Rome, Athens, Phrygia, Galatia, Mysia, Troas, Neapolis, Philippi, Apollonia, Berea, Thessalonica, and back again. Have you ever taken a trip with one of your best friends? When you spend a lot of time together, you learn a lot about each other. Well, Tim spent a lot of time with Paul, and he learned so much from him. And all those things he learned, he started telling other people. Some people thought Tim was too young to teach things to grown-ups. But Paul said to Tim, don't ever let people tell you that you're too young to tell them about God. You can show them how to act like Jesus. Kids, those things he said are in the Bible. 1 Timothy 4.12. Check it out. 
Remember, Paul knew a lot about God, and he was right. You're never too young to learn to act like Jesus. Anyway, in Tim's day, a lot of people were doing some pretty not nice things. Like some people tried to get their way all the time, or called their friends names. Others even did things like burp at the table right after their moms asked them not to. And they didn't even say excuse me. Tim showed them how to act like Jesus. After a while, Tim and Paul couldn't be together all the time, but that was okay because Paul still wrote lots of letters to Tim, and Tim was able to keep learning. And even though Tim was still learning, he started to tell people about God. You don't need to know everything about God to tell other people about him, kids. Just share what you know. Now the problem for Tim was sometimes he felt scared. He wasn't afraid of the usual stuff. Spiders, dogs, darkness, heights, snakes, dentists, germs, even fluffy pillows. Or maybe that last one's just me. Where were we? Oh yeah, Tim was scared to tell people about God because he thought nobody wanted to listen to him. In his letters, Paul taught Tim that he didn't have to be scared of anything because God is with him. And you don't have to be scared either. God's with you too. Tim learned a lot of other things from Paul's letters too. Like how he should always tell the truth, how he should make friends with people who are lonely, and how he should not be worried about looking cool or getting a lot of awesome new stuff. Remember, learning about God was Tim's favorite thing to do. So that's what he kept doing his whole life. And that's the story of Timothy. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Tim liked learning about God. He followed his teacher Paul all around the world and kept learning. He also showed a bunch of people what it looks like to follow God. Because Tim followed God, he wasn't as scared about things or worrying about stuff that didn't matter. And that's a part of God's story. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. That lady spoke very quickly, but she told us lots of things about Timothy or Tim, didn't she? So St. Paul wrote lots of letters. It was a very difficult time to be a Christian because people were trying to um, catch Christians and put them in prison for what they believed. And St. Paul spent some time in prison. So some of the letters he wrote were sent from prison to these churches and people that he knew, people that he'd met when he was traveling around, because you saw that him and Timothy traveled to lots and lots of different countries. So there were many, many letters and there was, it was a very difficult time because it was so long ago, 2000 years ago, it wasn't like today where if we send a letter or we can send an email, a letter electronically, and it gets there almost straight away. Or we can send a postal letter today and it might get there tomorrow if we're lucky. Um, so we can, we're used to communication and letters and ways of get, talking to people being really quick and easy. In St Paul's time, it might have taken months for letters to arrive. So it was a very different type, way of communicating than we do now. I wonder if you've ever written a letter to anyone. And I wonder if you ever think about things that somebody might be doing if you're concerned that it might be wrong. Would you ever write a letter, do you think? to let them know. Perhaps it's a bit different today than it was then, isn't it? I wonder how you feel when people seem to be doing the wrong things. And I wonder if you'd like to try and help them solve their problems. So writing a letter might be one way to do it. But you could spend some time th thinking about something like that. Perhaps you could write a letter asking someone how to or telling them how you think they might be able to solve a problem and sort things out. Have a think, but it may be that it's better sometimes just to talk to someone, isn't it? And, 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 uh, and try and understand how they're feeling. And sometimes it's nice for us to share how we're feeling with other people as well if we think we've got a problem. Now, let's say a prayer today. So if you'd like to put your hands together and close your eyes, if that's how you like to pray, or you can just listen to the prayer. Loving God, help us to know what is right and what is wrong. Help us to know what to do when things go wrong. Help us to know who to talk to when we're worried about something. And let us pray today for anyone who's finding things difficult at the moment. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to end today's collective worship. 
with the song My Lighthouse. I hope you know that one. It's quite a fun song and there's lots of actions. So perhaps you might like to stand up and join in with the singing and the actions while you're listening to this. Here we go. Here we go. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. to show <laughs> That was fun, wasn't it? Lots and lots of actions to remember, though. I'm looking forward to perhaps doing that all together when we get back to collective worship in, in church and in school next term. That will be good, won't it? Now, let's end with our prayer, our final prayer now. Here we go. God, be with each of us in our classroom. God, be with us now. God, be with us every day. God be with each of us now. God bless everyone. See you soon. I'm just going to blow my candle out. There we are. Bye.